diff time. Rebuilding this track lock. Broken clips. It's actually going pretty easy. Kind of hard with one hand though. This one fell apart, probably because these clutches are all worn out. What happens is that little clip that has dropped, <laughs> they break off. I'll show it to you when I get it out. They break off and then they start coming out. And that's your clutch pack on a track lock and your steels. And these clips right here are what break. And this one's actually good. Both of these clips on this side were good, but both of the clips on this side were bad. In fact, one of them fell out and got chewed up on the tone ring here, and the other one was broken and just sitting in there. So, these little clips break. And this side has the broken clips, which I think they all fell out. Just fine. Here's these clutches. These clutches are pretty fried. So the other clips, apparently, that were broken, your legs and walked off. But what happens is this little piece right here breaks off. And this holds the clutches and sits right in this hole right here. Well, one half of that breaks off and then the clip walks out. And once those walk out, the clutches start cutting grooves into your carrier. This one's not that bad. It's usable, but sometimes they get really bad. So, fun. You can get a... Rebuild kit from Summit Racing or your auto parts store. This is the part number for this one. And this rear end, in case you're wondering, is a nine and a quarter uh, corporate rear end out of a Ram Charger, half ton stuff. And it comes with pre stacked clutches and spring washer. So, and it comes with all the clips. That's it. The reason this thing came apart so easily is because these clutches are worn out. So it's not gonna go back together that easy, guaranteed. So we'll stack these new ones in there and then I'll show you how we press them in. So take these old clutches off. Go to the side. Now you have your spring washer on the bottom. You can see which way it's shaped so the cup faces up like that. It's important that you keep these in order. If you look, it's just basically the ones with the ears and then the smooth ones. And then one with the ear and the smooth one. So what I'll do is just take and flip these upside down, take one at a time and set them over. Just flip them over and put them right on. So here's the spring washer, cup shape up. Now, to assemble these, you don't just want to put them on here. If you just put them on there, these things will chatter like a son of a gun for days. So in between each steel and clutch, Use this limited slip supplement or like aqua torque one of those and just put a little bit on there and then put one on and then a little bit on every one otherwise it will chatter guaranteed and by the way my workbench is super clean so keep that in mind but we'll just put a little bit of this on there and then put down first clutch and i'll put some more on there and i'll do this between every layer like that
Then I'll take the retainer clips and put a dab of grease on each one. And that'll hold it on when I'm trying to slide these things in so I don't get it all over myself here. Like that. I'm not gonna be able to put this in with one hand, so. Anyways, now that these clips are on and stuck, I'll just line the clips up in those two holes and slide it in there nice and carefully. Now that I got the new clutches in, in this side of the spider gear, I'll take a measurement. And sometimes you have to do this to get it apart. This one fell apart because those clutches are just shot. But it's about three inches, so I'll get about a three and a half inch bolt and nut. These bolts are three and a half inches long. And I got some nice thick washers with a half inch hole in it. I'll put a washer on either side here and bolt it through, and then I can clamp that spring washer down. And I'll do that on both sides, and then I can then I can roll those spider gears in. Just roll them around and then put those washers in. That'll be it. Then I can release the pressure off and be done. Okay, this one's clamped down a little bit. So I got it tightened up. And all it's doing is putting pressure against that spring washer and giving me more room to work in here when I want to drop in my spider gears. Although it does make it a little tougher to rotate it. Now I'll stick this thing on end, rebuild this clutch pack real quick, and then drop it in. And then I'll bolt it the same way with the bolt facing this way, just like that one. Dropping in the left side clutch pack, I'm kind of holding it here. That's all you're doing is just lining those clips up, dropping it down in. That's it. Now I'll put the bolt through, clamp that side, and I can roll in my spider gears. This is a limited slip clutch style track lock, and it doesn't transfer power from one side to the other like a locking type or um, gear ratcheting type. Um, all it does literally is just limit the slip from side to side, and that's it. So if you have this type of rear end and you like to do a lot of burnouts, you will burn them out eventually. Not that I have any experience in that at all whatsoever. It's important to remember which side that these spider gears came off of because they're broken into that washer like this one is and that one's broken into that washer and they wear differently so if you have to mark them now that these are clamped i can drop in my spider gears so that's that one and then that's that one now the next thing i'll do is i'll take a brass punch and i'll tap right here and i know it's kind of scary once i get these lined up and those spacers in here then I can release these bolts and pull them out. Then if everything's lined up perfectly, I can slide that pin in. So I've got both the spider gears in and I put it in a vise with a rag to do this. And then I know it seems kind of sketchy, but basically what I'm doing is taking a brass punch and rolling these gears in to where the whole thing kind of rolls around and lines up. Now, the reason you have to have these clamped is because they're pushing in right now because of those spring washers. And if they weren't clamped, you would just want to push these gears out and you'd never get them to roll around. And you wouldn't have enough space to get those uh, spacers in there. And maybe some of you are wondering why I use a brass punch. It's simple. Brass is very soft compared to that. So when you're hitting it, this is going to get hurt, not that. That's why I use a brass punch. So I'm just working them around. They're starting to get lined up. Got a little ways to go yet. Now that it's rolled around and lined up, you can drop these washers in behind these gears. And if it's too tight and you can't get them in there, you can tighten these bolts up right here, which will give it more room. And then as I'm sliding that down, I'll stick a finger through the hole so I don't drop it out the other side. Then I can start putting this shaft in, which will hold the washer and the gear. Now I need to remove these two bolts here, and this washer is staying already. I'll probably have to line it up a little bit to get it all the way through after the bolts are out. It looks like I got it pretty well lined up. I'm going to line up this hole so that'll line up. Push it in until it's flush. And that's it. Now I can put the bolt in. This sucker's done. There it is. Just got to put the ring gear on. This customer has never had a working limited slip, so I think he's going to be pretty stoked.